um, until we have a critical mass of women who are able to get the men in their lives, the men that they work with, to understand how pervasive a problem it is, and then can get men to begin to act on this, because this isn't a women's issue. This is a violence issue and an issue of power and who has the power. So until the people who um, still primarily do hold the power, um, which is primarily men and primarily white men, until they're going to begin to act, um, then, then the problem's going to persist. Fundamental well, about it. this is how, this com how it's so normalized for all of us to go through this kind of harassment, especially in Hollywood, and how people kind of laugh off, oh, you know, that's locker room talk, or, you know, this is, this is the movie business, get used to it. And what we need to do is really pierce that veil of the normalization of this kind of conduct, because it starts with, you know, the, the comments and then it can escalate very quickly. So we really need to just change people's attitudes and get rid of the toxic masculinity. Hollywood has so much institutionalized sexism that sometimes I feel like we need to start over. I feel that this is on men. The men are the most of the perpetrators. They're also the collaborators. And at the Weinstein Company, their board was all men, and they were all complicit in creating an environment that uh, allowed this to thrive. In Hollywood, there's not a single woman, even the people at the tippy top of the industry who don't report to a men. This is also about getting more women into leadership positions and getting the men and holding the men accountable. The men in this industry need to step up. They need to say, we want to be, uh, we want to, we want to create this industry in a way that women can thrive and don't have to experience this anymore. Legal. We've had a little bit of conversation as men as, about men as survivors, but the conversation we haven't really had is about what happens when men are abused or enablers or allow this to happen in the workplaces, in schools, or in women's everyday lives. And so now we have an opportunity culturally for that conversation. That culture is going to have to hit where policymakers are. It's going to have to hit where employers are to, in order to make a real difference.